Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are a ton of news stories to get into today, so let's talk about the world of All Elite Wrestling, and let's talk about an interesting story when it comes to WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle. Now, Kurt Angle has been linked to AEW on multiple occasions, and he's even gone on record stating that he was offered on a couple of different occasions to actually come in and have some matches with All Elite Wrestling. Now, Angle has opened up more as to what those details actually consisted of and he's revealed that actually AEW specifically AEW president Tony Khan made him an offer to come in and be part of All Elite Wrestling on three separate occasions giving him three different types of deal ultimately of course it didn't happen but it's certainly interesting to think what could have been now WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle was on yesterday's episode of the Wrestling Inc Daily with Nick Houseman I definitely recommend checking that out now during the conversation with the managing editor of Wrestling Inc. Nick Houseman, uh, he was asked if Angle had ever talked to AEW about working for him. And this is what Angle said, and it's some fascinating information here. He said, quote, yes, they offered me a couple of different contracts. I turned it down for personal reason, but Tony Khan's been really nice to me, very generous, and I really appreciate his interest in having me there. But at this particular time, I can't do it. Now, Angle was on, I think he did an interview with Wrestling Inc. about a year or so ago, and during that appearance, he said that the AEW appearance was off the table. Angle also noted that the recently, uh, re then, that the NBA Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal had, had actually tried to recruit him for AEW, but this time, this time, Angle actually went into detail as to what these offers truly consisted of, and it's absolutely fascinating insight, truly it is. So this is what Angle had to say about what these offers actually consist of. Consisted of. He said, quote, The first offer, they wanted me to have many matches. Uh, the next offer, I think, was three matches. And then one was just an on-camera personality, no wrestling. As of right now, Kurt Angle, of course, is focusing on many outside endeavors, including his podcast, The Kurt Angle Show, with Comrade Thompson. Recommend to check that out. It's very good listening. He's also been commemorating his 25th anniversary of winning a gold medal at the 1996 Olympics for a partnership with uh, Garrickson, um, he, which is uh, a sneakers. So there's been some limited edition sneakers. You can check them out. Uh, if you go to WrestlingInc.com, you can actually find the link to Kurt Angle's limited edition sneakers. But the information that AEW made him multiple offers, I think is really interesting. Now, again, this isn't like totally, totally, totally breaking news because we do know that All Elite Wrestling made Kurt Angle uh, some offers before because he spoke about it in the past and he mentioned that those offers, again, consisted of actually wrestling matches, but given the condition of himself physically and his physical limitations at this point in his life after the multiple neck surgeries and the atrophy that he has in his arms, etc. He just couldn't do it anymore. Ultimately, that's why he retired in the first place, remember, with WWE in 2019. Vince McMahon wanted him to go an extra year and Kurt Angle said, you know, Vince, I just can't do it anymore. I just can't do it at the level that I once could. And my body's breaking down. And it was very obvious. In fact, it was painfully obvious. Not that it was sad, but it was just painfully obvious Kurt Angle couldn't do it anymore. If you, if you, well, not that he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it to the level of being Kurt Angle. That's the fair assessment to make. I don't think actually it's fair at all to say he couldn't do it because he could. And he probably still could today. He just wants to be Kurt Angle in terms of that wrestling machine, and he can't do that anymore. And if he can't do it at that level, this is a guy at the end of the day that won an Olympic gold medalist. He's an athlete. He's a competitor. He wants to compete at a at a, at a reasonable level, and he doesn't want to do a, a job that's 50%. He wants to be able to compete at the highest percentage possible, and he can't do that anymore with his physical limitations. So he decided to call it a day and retire, and... He's been very vocal at that the WWE retirement didn't go the way that he would have wanted to. And I think pretty much 99% of WWE fans or pro wrestling fans in general would have hoped that he would have got the retirement match or the send off that he deserved. Whether that match was against John Cena, which was the match that Kurt Angle wanted to have at WrestleMania 35. He wanted to face the guy that... Um, that he faced in John Cena's first match, right? He wanted he wanted to essentially do the favors. He was John Fien John Cena's first opponent, and he wanted John Cena to be his last opponent. It, it, it's it's good poetry, right? Uh, that's what they always say when it comes to Star Wars. It's poetry. It rhymes. And that's the kind of situation there. And that would have been perfect. It would have been perfect storytelling. Cena wasn't doing anything at that year's WrestleMania. Instead, he came out with the Doctor of Thugonomics stuff, didn't he? And did the segment with Elias. And instead, Kurt Angle had, what, a six-minute match with Baron Corbin that he lost. It was the penultimate match on the show. It was a super long show, and it just felt very... 
very weak, very blare, and didn't have anything really to it, which was a shame. So because of that and because of that sentiment that maybe more could have been done and maybe more should have been done when it comes to Kurt Angle's retirement. I think Tony Khan being, uh, at the end of the day, irrespective of him being a very wealthy man and the AW president and head of creative, etc. Tony Khan's just a pro wrestling fan at the end of the day. And I think he realized in the same way that most pro wrestling fans realize, you know what? That retirement didn't sit right with me. Kurt Angle deserves better and Kurt Angle deserves more. And because of that, I think Tony Khan saw an opportunity and said, you know what? We can give Kurt Angle the retirement that he deserves. Yes, is it going to be inside of a stadium at a WrestleMania event? No. And again, we don't really know the timetable of all of these offers, but it's certainly obviously been within the last couple of years. Um, he saw an opportunity to have Kurt Angle have some matches and, you know, again, go out on his own terms or not necessarily go out on his own terms, but... Again, have the retirement that he deserved and the retirement that I think a lot of pro wrestling fans wanted to see. I, I think it's very interesting. And again, if you listen to the audio, it's it's fascinating how he how he talks about it here. Uh, I think it's fascinating that that first offer by Tony Khan to Kurt Angle was to have many matches. And by many matches, I look into it as... You know, we're talking maybe like a two-year deal, and he was not maybe not going to be wrestling every week on Dynamite, but he was certainly going to be wrestling at every single pay-per-view and TV specials and all that kind of stuff, that essentially he was going to be a wrestler again. And I think that's why Angle went, yeah, no, 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 don't, you don't understand. I didn't, I wasn't WWE forcing me to retire or anything like that. It was me. I wanted to retire, and I, I just can't do it anymore. So that one's off the table. The next offer, when he says three matches, we don't know all that would have consisted of, but I would assume a trilogy with maybe one person or a couple of people at a big show, whether it be a, a double or nothing or an all out that would have been on a TV. Maybe it would have been two pay-per-views and one TV to do a big, big number on TNT, something like that. And then the third one, which I think would be more likely now, which he did say no to, as he mentioned, for personal reasons, but he said no to now, was just an on-camera personality, no wrestling. I could certainly see him coming in in a managerial role. We've spoken about Ric Flair recently possibly coming in and being a manager role for an MJF, someone like that. As far as who would Kurt Angle be a manager for an AW, it's a good question. It's a really good question. I look at that roster. Who would be a really good person for it to for Kurt Angle to be a, to be a manager for? I don't know. That's something you can let me know in the comment section below. When you look at that roster, who sort of stands out as someone that would be um, uh, Kurt Angle would be a good manager for? Because it can't be no disrespect to some of the rosters, but it can't be. It can't be someone that's just middle of the card. It's got to be someone that's got potential and they can elevate into that main event position. Maybe it would be someone like a Miro. I mean, the the whole you know dream match, wasn't it? Would have been a Kurt Angle versus Rusev of whole you know Russia versus USA or Bulgaria versus USA. But maybe they flip that to the other way around. Rusev's now or Miro's now living the American dream in All Elite Wrestling. Maybe Kurt Angle could be his manager on that side of things. I think that might work actually. I would have. Kurt Angle managing a Rusev, not that, or Miro rather, not that he needs a mouthpiece, but not every manager has to be a mouthpiece. It's kind of a misconception nowadays, isn't it? That our manager's a mouthpiece of someone that can't cut promos. No, no, no. Sometimes the manager does nothing. He just kind of stands there or she just stands there, but it extenuates the whole package, if you will, it extenuates the whole presentation. And that's, I think, what Kurt Angle would do. But it was it was certainly a fascinating bit of information and a fascinating interview by Nick Houseman, it must be said. Now, we have a lot of CM Punk stories coming up next, so you're going to have to bear with me here. But that's kind of what everyone's going to be talking about this week as we get closer to All Out. Of course, it's Dynamite tonight, so it's AEW night. And we are just mere days away from CM Punk's return to the ring at All Out as he goes one-on-one -on -one with Darby Allin. Now, ahead of his pro wrestling return, CM Punk Punk has reportedly retired from MMA. I know all oh, MMA fans will be crying out, no, no. <laughs> he has retired from MMA. AW star CM Punk has officially retired from mixed martial arts, according to a report on MMAfighting.com. Now, the report noted that Punk recently notified UFC of his decision so that he could be removed from UFC's anti-doping program because he was tested six times in 2020 and officially retired. Now, I think a lot of people expected that CM Punk would never fight in the UFC again, but it, wouldn't, it wasn't completely off the table that he wouldn't fight again, maybe in another promotion, right? Now, Punk's retirement isn't shocking, considering, of course, he hasn't fought inside the octagon since 2018, where he lost by unanimous decision to Mike Jackson at UFC 225. But that loss was later overturned to a no contest due to Jackson testing positive for marijuana 
For following Lung, uh, Lunk's Punk's loss to Jackson, UFC president Dana White indicated that the Chicago native would likely never return to UFC unless he could pick up some victories in some smaller MMA promotions. So Punk will officially retire from MMA with a 0-1-0, one no contest record. He lost his debut fight to Mickey Gall at UFC 203 in September of 2016. Of course, as I mentioned, Punk just returned to pro wrestling after a seven-year hiatus. He's going to be facing Darby Allen at All Out this coming Sunday. So this is no surprise or anything like that. Again, the I think the reason why Punk stayed in that Yasada testing pool for so long was because he kind of maybe thought, well, you know, maybe I do want to take it as a personal challenge and fight in some smaller promotion because you know it just bugged him. You know it ate at him that he stepped into the UFC and had this colossal failure and he just wasn't at the level that, it took to be a primetime UFC fight. It just wasn't good, right? So I think he stayed in the testing pool because he thought, maybe I am going to continue to fight. He still does UFC commentary, um, but he's not going to be fighting anymore. So I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's no big loss to the MMA world, obviously. But CM Punk has officially retired from mixed martial arts. Speaking of Punk, you would have seen these on recent episodes of Dynamite and Rampage. CM Punk recently fueled pro wrestling rumors by writing various initials on his shoes while appearing on AEW Rampage and AEW Dynamite in his first appearances for the company. Now, fans speculated that Punk was actually teasing the debuts of Bray Wyatt, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, and possibly the Raw Women's Champion Charlotte Flair because he had the initials of BW, AC, BD, and CF. Uh, Punk recently spoke with the New York Post and was asked about the messages on his sneakers. He noted that CF F stood for Chicago Forever and AC stood for Always Chicago, which was actually speculated by some fans. Punk admitted that he borrowed the gimmick from NBA star LeBron James. This is what he said, quote, I stole from LeBron James. A lot of basketball players will write messages on their shoes and stuff. I wrote AC on my shoes and CF on the other foot. AC is Always Chicago and CF is Chicago Forever. Now, BW and BD were written on Punk's sneaker while he was in Milwaukee with AEW, but he did not explain what those two messages meant. So, obviously, those first ones, he told what they actually mean, but he's the way to look at it, I look at it as, okay, explain those first ones, that's fine. But he did admit that he is writing those things on his sneakers as a message. So whilst maybe the first one was about Chicago, he wasn't in Chicago the second time round. It was BW and BD. What did that stand for? You can let me know in the comment section below, but I don't think it's a stretch to still say, okay, this first one were always Chicago and Chicago forever, but the next one could be anything. Could be anything. Could be Brian Danielson. The irony is he referenced Brian Danielson in his promo. Could be Bray Wyatt. Certainly could be. He admitted that they are messages and they are acronyms for something. What they are acronyms for, time will only tell. But I, I like it. I, I love Easter eggs and stuff like that. That's why I'm obsessed with like those uh, channels that do like breakdowns and Easter eggs of movies and trailers. I think it's great. So I love that kind of stuff. Speaking of punk as well, because he has been making the rounds, obviously hyping up his debut match in AEW this coming weekend. Uh, he was asked in an interview with WGN News about ranking where his AEW debut ranks in his career. He said, quote, right at the top, I think it's got to be the number one night of my career easily, hands down. I haven't uh, been able to process it all yet. We're a week removed from it all, and I still haven't been able to digest it all. Now, Punk discussed why he chose now to arrive in AEW, after being out of pro wrestling for seven years and Punk said it's all about timing he said quote timing's everything I've got a lot of a lot of other stuff going on and AEW looks like an exciting fun place that enables me to rekindle my love for professional wrestling but it also allows me to continue to do my MMA broadcasting continue to act in TV and movies and do a couple of other things uh, I would probably uh, that will uh, will find out probably come October November it was a perfect storm an offer I couldn't refuse people I wanted to work with friendly working environment tremendous backstage area just everything that reminded me while I got into professional wrestling in the first place. Now, Punk was then asked about how he was approaching his return to wrestling and if he had a new appreciation of it. For Punk, those questions can all be answered in that initial entrance. He said, well, watch that entrance. Watch me come out on the ramp. I'm telling myself to slow down instead of worrying about the past or stressing about the future. I am 100% in that moment. 
And I think that's what you're going to see. It's a different CM Punk. You're for sure going to see a guy who realizes that this is probably has a time limit on it. I'm 42 years old, so let's go. Let's try and have fun. Let's enjoy the moment and let's enjoy this silly thing we all love called professional wrestling. Seven years is a long time and I'm a different person. That doesn't mean I'm going to be any less entertaining. So he said there's going to be a different CM Punk. I think we've kind of seen a different CM Punk over the course of the last few weeks. That's not to say that I like it. <laughs> it must be said. Um, the reason I say that is, look, obviously, that initial entrance from Rampage and the promo last week on Dynamite I thought was fine. But the whole, I'm just really happy to be here guy, I don't, you know, for me, the best CM Punk is a CM Punk that's fired up, got an agenda, is annoyed, is, is a heel. That's the best version of CM Punk and a guy that gets his teeth sunk into various storylines. I think that's what I look for in the CM Punk character. And when he was cutting the promo on Derby last week, when he actually got into the nitty gritty of the story, that's when I went, right, that's that's CM Punk at his prime. Not necessarily just, uh, this is great, I'm so happy that I'm here, that kind of stuff. That's what I'm kind of waiting for. The, obviously, the first moment was amazing, and his entrances still are going to be amazing. Chicago this week is going to be amazing. But once he really starts to get his teeth sunk into storylines, I think that's when we're going to see the best version of CM Punk. And of course, once he starts wrestling, which is, of course, this past week, this coming weekend, rather. So that's really the exciting moment when it comes to CM Punk in AEW. This weekend, as mentioned, is all out. And you're going to have some ice cream bars on sale if you're at any of the events this week in Chicago. The CM Punk Best in the World ice cream bars will be sold at the AEW All Out Week events in the Chicago area. AEW announced yesterday that the Punk ice cream bars will be sold at concession stands during, uh, or rather, they announced it today. That it would be announced. Uh, that they would be sold rather at the Dynamite tapings today, Friday's Rampage, and Sunday's All Out pay per view in the Now Arena in Illinois. Uh, as previously noted, fans at the United Center received the free ice cream bars after Punk's AEW debut at the Rampage taping last month. The pretty cool ice cream shop in Chicago revealed that Punk paid the entire bill for the free treats. Free treats, rather. Punk will appear on tonight's Dynamite episode at the Now Arena to promote Sunday's All Out pay per view. It'll be interesting to see if finally he gets physical or he faces off with Derby because we haven't seen that really we saw Punk come out on Rampage and say that that's he was going to be wrestling and he was going to be having that match against Derby Allen but apart from that we haven't seen any physicality of course I don't know if we necessarily need to see that but I think tonight or certainly Friday is the time to see Punk and Derby in the same ring not that we need much of a story here the story is Punk's return but I would like to see certainly a little bit of a face-off whether that's tonight, whether that's Friday, I think we have to see it at some point this week. But if you are going to any of the shows, get an ice cream bar. You know, they're going to be historic. They were historic anyway. Um, I don't know how good they are, but it's an ice cream bar, right? At the end of the day, enjoy yourself. Uh, Punk also spoke about the possibility of a WWE return and said what I think everyone knows, that it just was never going to happen. It was never going to happen. Now, he was on the Angie Taylor show to promote his match, um, and he was asked... Um, when about the, the, the chances or that he would ever return or prior to joining AEW, if there was ever a chance he would return. And Punk also revealed that a Punk a, a punk return to WWE, rather, was never, from a logical standpoint, in the cards for him. He also revealed that he hadn't even considered a return to pro wrestling until about three years ago due to a lack of an AEW in the wrestling landscape. He said, quote, I don't think I considered it three years ago, five years ago. I don't even think AEW existed. I don't think going back to WWE was ever really logically on the table. So... I think that's and I think that's true. I, look, look, I know a lot of people said never say never, but and they'll, they'll it'll come back. Everyone eventually comes back. The Punk one did feel kind of different. I know, like even Warrior, the Ultimate Warrior, came back after litigation, and you know Hogan came back and all that kind of stuff. But you know WWE fired this guy on his wedding day, and then he got sued for defamation by a WWE doctor. They're really heavy stuff. And they'll say, but he went back, did WWE backstage. That was for Fox. And he didn't have anything to do with WWE. It was just the name. And basically, he got to go on FS1 and just bury the product. I don't think he cared about that at all. So 
It was never on the cards. I, I Never on the cards. And certainly now, it's certainly never going to happen. CM Punk's days in WWE are totally over. And they're not. he's not going to go back. That's just not going to happen. Finally, Kira Hogan has been announced that she'll be part of the AEW Women's Casino Battle Royale this Sunday. Last night on AEW Dark, it was announced that former Impact Wrestling star Kira Hogan has been added to the Casino Battle Royale. Hogan, of course, made her AEW debut on the August 16th episode of Dark Elevation. And her last match was against Jade Cargill at Rampage on the Rampage the First Dance episode from the United Center in Chicago. So we have so many names already in this match. We have Nyla Rose, Thunder Rosa, The Bunny, Big Swole, Julia Hart, Ty Conte, Diamante, Penelope Ford, Red Velvet, Hikaru Shida, Emi Sakura, Jade Cargill, and now Kira Hogan. I think, and this is happening on the buy-in, I think that's where we're going to have Ruby Soho make her AEW debut. Of course, we are going to get uh, the final Joker participant, which I think is going to be Ruby Soho. Who's going to win that match? Maybe Ruby Soho, that gets her an opportunity at Britt Baker. I still think Thunder Rosa could be winning that one. Um, my only concern with Thunder Rosa winning it is that I think then she would have the match with Britt Baker and she would lose. But they're going to have the rematch at some point. Thunder Rosa owns a victory over Baker anyway, but it didn't count, of course, to rankings because it was in a lights-out, unsanctioned match. But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all of these AEW news stories we've spoken about today? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interact with you guys talking about AEW, Impact Wrestling, WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go to the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or having come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.